Good evening, family and friends, and welcome to the ceremony that's going to unite Casey and Gail in marriage. What an awesome evening. Um, we're gathered here this evening to celebrate their union and honor their commitment of not just gazing at one another, but looking outwardly together in the same direction. Today, Casey and Gail proclaim their love for each other in the presence of God. We will guide them together from this point forward. A uh, great marriage is not when a perfect couple comes together, um, rather it's when an imperfect couple uh, learn to enjoy their differences. No one can promise them uh, that a marriage is going to be easy, but marriage the way that God intended it is a treasure worth a lifetime commitment. The kind of love that enriches each part of life and marriage enriches love. Two lives shared with this kind of love can hold more fulfillment and happiness than either life alone. And if you want something to last forever, you treat it differently. You shield it and you protect it. You never abuse it. You don't expose it to the elements. You don't make it common nor ordinary. If it ever becomes tarnished, you lovingly polish it until it gleams like new. It becomes special because you've made it so, and it grows more beautiful and precious as time goes on. Casey, are you ready to take this beautiful woman as your wife best friend through all of life's trials? Absolutely. Gail, are you ready to take your boyfriend <laughs> as your husband and best friend through all of life's trials? <laughs> Sorry about that. We've only done this one. So, I should have said it. That was secret. Okay. Uh, uh, Casey and Gail have chosen to share uh, with their family, their friends, uh, personal declarations of their love for each other. And as they prepare, let me remind all of us that no other human ties are more tender, no other promises are more sacred than these. You are entering into a holy estate, the very ceremony of love. Uh, Gail, with God's direction, do you take Casey to be your husband? <laughs> okay, so Casey and Gail, you've agreed that this is a lifetime decision. Um, it's an example to your children. It's a resolute commitment to each other, and it's an everlasting promise uh, before God. Um, Gail, if you'd like, please share your personal promises with Casey. I'm so glad you came into my life. I love you for your ambition, your calm and your pressure, your humor, spontaneity, strength, and intelligence. I love you for entrusting me with honor to parent alongside you for your commitment and devotion to our four children and all the things to do. No one else knows I love you for your middle of the night emails with Cherry from China <laughs> and taking the helm in the command center and for tirelessly planning our future. Thank you for the grand rules and playbook. Thank you for accepting my apologies, even the ones I have yet to make. I love you for understanding my blood sugar and that I eat and gratefully eat more than you do. <laughs> for getting that bug for me, for accepting that furniture needs to be moved regularly. <laughs> for reminding me again, even though we already talked about it three times. And I vow to remind you to hydrate. <laughs> for embracing my emotions when you don't get it. And for hugging me when I cry. 
from lying on me to pick up on those things you don't always recognize. I love you for your intensity on the ice. I love you for being my favorite hockey player in handsome Viking. I love your attention to details, also known as OCD, <laughs> and for embracing my love of cheers. <laughs> talking on the phone until almost daylight so many nights. Thank you for waiting for me, then taking me to San Francisco where my goals for you only deepened in that no turning back now way. Thank you for taking me camping, not going too fast on the way runners. <laughs> taking me to the movies for understanding that waking up at 3 or 4 a.m. is a normal sleep pattern. <laughs> and getting us a limo ride home on your birthday. Thank you for working long hours so you can get home to us. And for knowing that the long text I sent is something we should talk about later. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me that my value is not measured in numbers, that your work takes you all over while I run things here, that my contribution is vital and allows you to do what you do with peace of mind. We are a team and we share in our successes and failures. Thank you for all your superpowers, for always being my boyfriend through the exciting times that life hands us. All the pieces will find their place. Until then, we can laugh at the confusion, live for the moment, and know that everything happens for a reason. Procrastination and all will make it through it all. Your happiness is my happiness, and I want to be everything you didn't know you were looking for. And I will be Casey, with God's direction, uh, would you like to please uh, share your promises with you? So be before this, uh, I asked her how many words her uh, this is going to be, and she told me 95, and um, I don't know if any of you guys were counting, but I'm just bringing that up so I can get uh, closer to her. I think 950, she, I don't know that. <laughs> she told me about that zero in the end. <laughs> wow, honey, you're beautiful. I mean, what can I say? Um, uh, first thing I got to say is uh, I'm, I'm grateful for marrying such a, a wonderful, kind, appreciative woman. If there were more people like you out there in the world, the world would definitely be a better place. Uh, I also want to uh, uh, welcome your wonderful kids and your amazing family to mine and my kids and my family's life. You really do truly have wonderful kids and what an amazing family you have. I mean, your family is a, it's the poster child of a great family. It really is. Uh, we've already been through so much together. Uh, I'm looking forward, forward to a future of many adventures, many good times. I know there'll be sorrows. I know there'll be, there'll be uh, trials. They will I mean, you can't expect life not to have those things. But I know that uh, we will get through them. And we've given it a pretty good test run so far. As if uh, everybody, you know, knows that. <laughs> uh, you know, things things to uh, come. Uh, I'd like to do some more jungle tailgating with you. <laughs> uh, or searching on Google Earth to find the next beach we're going to explore the next day. Uh, planning another event like this, I mean, look at you pulled us off. I mean, this is great. <laughs> Figuring out our next family adventure. Not sure what that'll be next weekend. Maybe, maybe not. Um, the next big idea. You remember those hours and hours we'd sit on the phone just talking about endless ideas of how we were going to change anything. But it was, it was that point in the relationship where we could talk for hours about nothing. That's a, I'll 
that's a, that's a good time. I mean, that is the best part of the relationship. I love that about us. Or sneaking away for the weekend to San Francisco or Phoenix, not telling too many people, maybe coming home a day early, but not letting anybody know I'm in town and just coming over to your house. You can't really do that anymore, but that was definitely it. You know, one of the things I love about you is uh, your ability to pick up on things. I will uh, get out of bed in the morning, and this is 4.30 in the morning before I'm going to work, and I'll go sock drawer, and I'll pull up my socks, and I'll look at them and think, wow, you know what? I should really go buy some new socks. I come home from work that day, I've got six brand new pairs of socks <laughs> sitting on my bed. That's a daily thing around here. You are, uh, I mean, picking up on needs. I don't really truly know anybody else that is as good of that as you are. And yes, I love you for your chair fetish. <laughs> I will take my truck and pick up a chair for you anytime. <laughs> we can call that we can call that date night. <laughs> and, and I gotta say, I love your passion towards everything in life. You are a very passionate person. It really doesn't matter what the subject matter is and that's we could talk for hours about that, but I love you for that. <laughs> you are definitely one of a kind. And I'm honored to be your husband soon. But I will always call you my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> when I was upstairs, this was Casey a little while ago, um, I didn't get to see the personal <laughs> message yeah, from Gail, but I saw the personal message from Casey that said, those are the types of things that make an evening like this. And I think that's what cool. this brings everybody closer together now that we're all close family and friends, but it's, it's tremendous to you know, hear those types of words. Uh, so Casey, with God's direction, do you take Gail to be your wife? Awesome. So if you could repeat after me, please. Uh, hi, Casey. Take you, Gail, to be my beloved wife, to have and to hold you, to honor you, to treasure you, to be at your side in sorrow and in joy, in the good times, in the bad, and to love and cherish you always. And I promise you my deepest love my fullest devotion and my most tender care and with all of my heart for all the days of my life. Gail, with God's direction, you take Casey to be your husband.
Tracy and Gail asked me to um, share what is the meaning of a wedding ring. And so I did a lot of research and I kind of put a few things from the internet and a few things from my own mind. And the first thing I have to do is put my glasses on so I can read what I put down. <laughs> so, was that that? so, what is the meaning of the wedding ring? And I don't know how many of you have had an opportunity to stand and actually um, warm the wedding rings. I don't know if many of you did, but if you did, um, before you came in, we wanted to bless the wedding rings in this union. And so as I um, talk about the union and about the wedding ring and about the family, I just, and at the end, I'm going to offer a blessing. And I want just each one of you to be able to just share in that with me. So the ring says things like, I love you, you're special, you're mine, I'm taken. And they say other things like, back off don't bother. Unavailable. <laughs> and before the wedding started, many of you took that opportunity to participate in the ring warming and said a blessing or a prayer and made a wish for them. Words are pow powerful, but they can be fleeting. And the sound of them is soon gone. Therefore, the wedding ring becomes the enduring symbol of the promises we have heard. The ring is a circle like the repeated cycles of the year, spring, summer, autumn, winter, and spring again. For a marriage, we must weather all the seasons. The wedding ring represents infinity, the endless circle of love it means forever. But today, <laughs> it rolls too. <laughs> but today, along with joining Gail and Casey, there is also a joining together of a family. It is important when joining two families together that they love and care for them as if they are their own. As Gail and Casey have made a commitment to each other. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so today, as Gail and Casey make a commitment to each other, today they are also making a, a commitment to Caitlin to Cody, to Jacob, and to Kylie, to be a family, to respect and to care and to listen and to love them. God has made each one of them with unique and different gifts, different personalities, and different hearts desires. It is important for all of them to honor that in each other. So this brings me to the book of Ephesians chapter three. And I want to pray this, so if you would all just join me in prayer right now as I pray this over this family. For this reason, we come before our Heavenly Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I ask that you would grant, according to your riches of your glory, to be strengthened and strengthen this family with the power through the Holy Spirit. I ask that you would give them wisdom and how to walk and talk and guide each other and love each other. I ask that as Christ dwells in their hearts through faith, through faith that this family would be grounded in love. I ask that Gail, Casey, Caitlin, Cody, Jacob, and Kylie would know and see that you are able to do it exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we could ask or think according to the power of the Holy Spirit that works in each and every one of them. So, Lord, I ask that you would help Casey and Gail remember when they first met. And as we heard tonight, Father, they declared uh, some of those early days. And I ask that you would remind them of that strong love that grew between them. And that they would take that love and they would work it into the practical things so that nothing could divide them. We ask for words, both kind and loving, and hearts always ready to ask forgiveness as well as forgive. So dear Lord, we put this marriage and this family into your hands. Amen. Thank you, sir. So Kylie, um, if I could have the ring, if you could pass that to Casey. 
Casey, if you could place the ring on the fourth finger of Gail's left hand, repeat after me. Gail, I give you this ring. As a symbol of our marriage. As a pledge of my love. And as a pledge of my love. And faithfulness. I promise to you. I promise to you. With all my love. With all my love. You'll be my partner. You'll be my partner. In all adventures. In all adventures. In the great things. In the great things. You have to come in our lives. You have to come in our lives. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. And this evening, for as much as Casey and Gail have consented together in holy wedlock, before God uh, and this company of witnesses have given their pledge, each to each other, and declared the same by giving and receiving of rings, joining hands, by the power invested in me by our loving God in the state of Oregon, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to be the first to announce to you Mr. and Mrs. Hobakin.